everyone, and welcome back to episode five of the SpongeBobblematic cast. Uh, today, we are going to be going over, as it would imply, episode five of season one. Now that encompasses 5A pizza delivery, as well as 5B nematodes. Oh, yeah. I just got to say before we get going, pizza delivery is by, maybe not by far, but it is my favorite episode of SpongeBob, so I can't wait to get into it. And I will say as well, 5B is not actually called nematodes. That's what it's most remembered for. It's called home sweet pineapple. <laughs> I didn't even notice that you called it nematodes, yeah. Just thought I'd get that out of the way before we actually get going there. Because yep. uh, if you look it up, that's what you're going to see. Now, pizza delivery here. This one's written by Sherm Cohen, Aaron Springer, and Peter Burns. And is storyboarded by Sherm Cohen and Aaron Springer. And so this episode, you know, kind of like was implied just a minute ago, it's very iconic. It's very memorable, has a lot of really good, solid moments in it. Yeah. And the, the way it starts, it really just kind of shows you the exact kind of attitudes you'd be expecting. It's a little bit later in the, the evening. Squidward's ready to go home. He's telling SpongeBob that, but SpongeBob, he's cleaning, trying to do a good job, you know, kind of as you would expect of him. Yeah, then... um. There's a call that comes in, uh, Spongebob, Squidward's right next to it, it's on like his little cashier area, uh, but Spongebob immediately starts running for it, saying, I got it, but Squidward picks it up beforehand. Uh, kind of early on, and this is kind of a dichotomy that's being set up uh, early on, that's, again, we obviously know this by now, but if, obviously, if this is the first time you're watching a Spongebob episode, you might not know, it's showing that Spongebob is the dedicated hard worker, and Squidward is a little more, pa and I, it doesn't even really come off as laziness, you know, someone wanting to go home from a job, I think, is something that we can all relate to, but it's showing that Spongebob is definitely more of an over-the-top dedicated worker, while Squidward is just more lax and non-caring about his job. Um, but yes, Squidward takes this job to survive. SpongeBob takes it because he wants it. Exactly. Um, so Squidward picks up the phone and he starts uh, he starts talking to the guy and he's he's gonna say that we're closed. Uh, but before then, Mr. Krabs, the owner of the restaurant, grabs it away from him and starts talking to him because he. I mean, and I think it's implied too that like he knows that Squidward's gonna be like no. So it's like because obviously it's been established that Squidward and Mr. Krabs have worked together for a long time, so he just kind of knows. Hey, I'm making money off this. I don't care what you're gonna do, Squidward. I'm taking this from you. So uh, he grabs it from him and he starts taking his order. And as he does it, uh, he realizes, like, he's, he's kind of saying it out loud. He's like, yep, one pizza. And Squidward's like, Mr. Krabs. And he's like, for delivery, we'll get it to you right away. And Squidward's like, Mr. Krabs. And afterwards, he's like, because this, this, this is a burger place. We don't have pizza and we don't deliver, which is, you know, is, is, is very strange. We don't deliver, but you do. Yep. And then he, um, and then there's a funny, like, when, when he points out, like, okay, well, we don't serve pizza, he just grabs, like, a plate of Krabby Patties and just punches them into a pizza. But it's, like, it's not, like, a gross pizza, it's just, like, a mushroom and pepperoni pizza, which is, which is interesting. And it's just, it, it's a whole thing that really shows Mr. Krabs. We haven't had a lot of highlights with him so far, but it's been kind of implied at this point, you know, he's greedy, he just wants to make money. And here, you know, we see he's willing to make a, a whole custom menu item and then force unpaid overtime just, you know, make that little extra. So just another showing of kind of his personality there. And we see that there is it's kind of implied it's a corporate boat that they're going to go make the delivery in. Then SpongeBob shows again, like we saw before, he, he knows a lot about boats. It's mostly his anxiety that holds him back with them, where he does this whole check around. He's like, if the tire pressure is right, bumper looks good, bumper sticker. Uh, everything else looks good. And then he tells Squidward, okay, you know, we're, we're good to go. And Squidward's like, well, then you should drive. But then, you know, SpongeBob, he has issues with that. Yeah, and it's a very strange... I feel like we don't see this a lot in SpongeBob. There is an almost immediate callback to a previous episode. You know, I feel like a lot of the episodes are pretty self-contained. Obviously, there's like like more general narratives that are continued throughout, but specific things that happen or specific things we learn aren't really that like this is like the last episode that we talked about was boating school and then we come to this one where we're immediately seeing that in more of a real world scenario that's not just contained to there where spongebob's having to to be in a boat and and, and all that stuff so it's interesting that they did a right away did a callback back to that and, and reinforce that character trait of his it is interesting to note as well that uh the steering wheel of the boat is on the right side which uh isn't how it normally works in america but i guess that's how it works in this one episode in particular. it is yeah because in the boating school episode it was definitely on the left side so yeah they just changed it yeah because squidward is already sitting on the right um and he does not seem to realize how bad of a driver spongebob is and spongebob asking him to drive kind of implies to me that 
Squidward does have a license. I think we see way, way later in the show that he does, but this is the only time it's ever implied that he can drive because he doesn't really have anywhere to store a boat. I don't think he really has one of his own, at least like at any point in the show that actually matters unless they want to make like a plot out of it. I mean, yeah, but... the, the most we see Squidward usually riding around on is that like reclined bike that he, he rides around sometimes. We don't usually see him in a boat. But I mean, you know, I, I think it's kind of the idea like Squidward's the, again, going back to the core character, Squidward's the adult, SpongeBob is the kid. So it's just kind of implied that he knows how to drive. And then Squidward's the like, or SpongeBob is the, the scared, you know, kid that doesn't want to drive because it's, you know, big and scary. Um, but then Squidward says, Squidward's like, you know, he he clearly has no idea that SpongeBob doesn't know how to drive. So he's like, what are you doing? But, you know, back it up. And then uh, SpongeBob, again, getting all flustered, goes, back it up. All right, backing up, backing up. And then in a, in a very, very quotable and memorable line, he starts screaming as he uh, puts it in reverse. And, and uh, as he would say in the previous episode, floors it. And the car starts flying backwards. Uh, Squidward tries to regain control, but it's not happening. There's like a funny little bit where they're going over some rocks. And so the backing up turns into backing up. And uh, and it's, yeah, it's, it just goes out of control. And there's kind of like a, a time skip. Like we get a different time of day. You know, it was night when they left. When the car eventually runs out of gas, uh, it's daytime. And Squidward's like, well, you know what? You backed up. Yep. And you know what else? We're in the middle of nowhere. And you know what else else? I think the pizza's getting cold. Yeah. And then he goes, and, well, yeah, that's what SpongeBob says. And then Squidward gets all sarcastically dramatic. Oh, the pizza's cold. The pizza's cold. How could it get any worse? And then he kicks the car. It fills back up with gas somehow and then speeds away on its own. Which is, you know, I mean, obviously, again, just showing Squidward's negative cause and effect where he will do something and it will come back to bite him almost immediately. It's yet again a show of how, you know, the the way that karma exists within the, the inner workings of the show's universe. Very much. Even and the so, even the laws of physics can be defied in order to uh, in order to scorn Squidward. It, it's all a matter of perspective. And then so they basically just start walking because they have no other choice. They are in the middle of nowhere. There's like sand and the road. And then SpongeBob, like he starts singing this Krusty Krab pizza song. He's going to be singing pizza? like the whole episode. The and pizza? me. <laughs> exactly and you know it's not like this is like a produced song it's not like you know when spongebob ripped his pants you know the, the song he had on the beach there this is more just like spongebob is singing but it yet again just shows that you know little musical bit that the show is interested in doing uh pretty often at this point in it where it, it just likes to have little musical bits and likes to have its characters kind of sing get energetic with it uh show how they're feeling i mean it's also something too like again i i think i could speak for everyone for you and for everyone listening to this, that the Krusty Krab pizza song is stuck in everyone's heads. You you would sing it, you know, while watching the episode. You would sing it while not watching the episode. You will like, you know, I I I, I trust me. I will do a shitty rendition of it when we get to the part in the episode where he does a full song. Like it's it's, it's such an icon. It is uh, out of all the SpongeBob songs that we've you know talked about and will talk about in the future. I, it, it, and we we say like when SpongeBob is singing, it's usually not him singing. They get somebody else to like just do a song, but it's like him lip singing. The one that he actually does sing, or I mean, again, the later version, he doesn't actually sing the the later bit. Um, is the one that's probably the most remembered. And like most quoted, um, which is, you know, I mean, I think, you know, speaks to not only this episode, but just like the catchiness of the song. And, you know, in addition to that, that's that's really not the only thing that's going to be going on, because most of this episode is just them trying to find their way back to uh, civilization. And so SpongeBob, he puts his ear to the ground and Squidward is <laughs> asking him what he's doing. He says, oh, you know, it's an old pioneer trick. There's a truck coming 16 wheels. And he is actually correct <laughs> about is, that. The right. trick, you know. It does work, but then his method of hitchhiking is dancing in the middle of the road. Um, so instead of stopping, the guy just, he keeps going. And then Squidward has to stop Spongebob from getting himself killed in the middle of the road. Well, yeah, he, he tackles him like an inch before he's about to get creamed, which is which is kind of a thing that I think, uh, it, it does, there is kind of a, a callback, I suppose, to this moment, but sort of generally about their relationship where Squidward is very, like, he does not like Spongebob, but he doesn't actually like he does it's weird he does hate he does like feel protective of him though a little bit 
there's like a little that bit of that like big brother vibe kind of going on where if like you know if you've ever had a big brother or if you are a big brother you, there's an instance where it's like you kind of like you, you're really annoyed by your younger brother they're annoying they're always like doing all this shit but you do you don't like want them to actually get hurt you know there there's some element to it where you want you maybe want to like annoy that you maybe want to make them mad or make them like suffer quote unquote whatever that means but like like you don't want them actually to get hurt and that's you know something that gets called back to later but in this is you know we see we see the at least beginnings of it it's kind of one of those dichotomies like where you have um like homer simpson and ned flanders where like you'll have episodes where homer will be like i wish something bad would happen to flanders then something bad happens he's like i feel bad i didn't actually want to see him suffer yeah and it's it's one of those situations where it's like it's one of those things where you know I, I don't do this, but I know some people do this, especially like, you know, back in the day, people are like, you know, God, I wish that guy would like drop dead or whatever. But if they actually did, you'd feel really bad that that happened, even though like it obviously didn't actually have anything to do with you saying that. Exactly. Uh, it, it, it's that kind of relationship. And so they they have that going on. And then after that, we have, you know, more of a singing interlude, more of the same kind of thing there. Uh, Tom Kenny, you know, really stretches his vocals to do some of the, the different work SpongeBob does there because he's doing different voices. He's doing different styles of music just to kind of pass the time as he's walking with squidward squidward does not want anything to do with that though yeah and, and there's a there's a little funny bit where like they're they're walking and there's like a huge windstorm that's like pushing that pushing spongebob around uh and he's getting like pulled it's implied that he's getting like pulled by the pizza that he's holding and uh squidward keeps telling him to let it go and he won't do it um and then Squidward goes, it's just a stupid pizza. And then, like, the wind stops. SpongeBob stops at his tracks and goes, oh, Squidward. <laughs> it's just... the, the situation The situation that happens is uh, Squidward says, who cares about the customer? I do. Well, I don't. And yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that is... <laughs> SpongeBob takes it so seriously, this idea of, like, you have to please the customer. That's your job. Exactly. You know, we're, we're out here trying to... Like, you know, what could be better than serving up smiles? You know, he hasn't said that yet, but that is a, a line of his later. And so, but but the thing is, right, is Squidward could easily just let SpongeBob and the pizza get sucked up into this tornado, but he grabs onto SpongeBob, just like let go of the pizza, which again shows, as we saw earlier, you know, Squidward doesn't actually want harm to befall SpongeBob in spite of the fact that, you know, they don't get along. Yeah. And this episode is actually different than um, some of the other ones we've seen because, when you think about it, Squidward is absolutely in the right. The 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 thing that he like he's not really being that like lazy or unreasonable about this. It is kind of ridiculous. Not even that they're doing this, but the situation that they're in for SpongeBob to be so over like trying to please the customer. Um, but you know, I, it, again, I, I mean, it is you know the like there he you know he is at odds with SpongeBob in this situation, so he is going to kind of always get his his comeuppance a little bit. So when they get sucked up into the tornado, Squidward just plummets to the ground because it magically just clears up out of nowhere, um, and then SpongeBob gently floats down using the pizza as a parachute, which is a, a funny visual gag. And the whole thing is, you know, the, the dichotomy of SpongeBob and Squidward is not you know right and wrong. It's it's cynicism versus positivity exactly. you know it's like squidward never wants to do anything spongebob always wants to do everything to the best of his ability and we see here that extends even to points that are illogical and don't make any sense spongebob still wants to do his best even in situations where any normal person would have different concerns on their mind at that point point. Yeah. and we we see what happens you know after they're done with that bit is they run into a, a mossy rock and spongebob's like oh look Moss always points towards civilization, and Squidward's like, okay, so you think we should go that way? And so Squidward starts walking in the opposite direction. Now, this is something, um, it, it's a weird line in that, so Moss always points towards civilization is obviously not, like, anything that it's anyone's ever said. real, <laughs> like... Yeah, and so the, the thing he's talking about, and we do see, actually, civilization would have been in that direction. Yes, there's, like, but... a whole town with, like, it, there's, like, a sign that says beds, like, it's just, like, the perfect spot you could have ended up in. Uh, but... However, the, the thing that Spongebob is referring to is Moss always points north, which is something that is said, but is also actually not true. Um, in the northern hemisphere, that's usually the case because of the way shade gets cast during the day. It makes mm -hmm. a better environment for Moss. However, Moss can go in any direction depending on like other external factors. It, it's one of those things like you know, the toilet flushing, the direction isn't based on your hemisphere. It's one of those things like the micro effects don't actually change things like this they're more macro effects yeah and again it's just it's it's just one of those it's a it's one of those pioneer tricks that uh that he that he uses uh but again it's 
it, it, it just kind of shows like and, and again i think this is definitely because the first one it's like okay so he he did the the listening for the 16 wheeler bit and that worked he was right but then the the dance he did was ridiculous and didn't actually end up working um but that's not necessarily his fault that might have been the actual day but then this one we see just he is just absolutely right 100 percent. the moss was pointing towards civilization um so the pioneers that uh that are getting brought up were were correct in that um which is you know interesting but it, it's it, it just kind of shows like again it's the it's like you said optimism versus pe- uh pessimism like you know not only is he being optimistic but he's like quoting whatever this is but it's mainly his optimism that is just trying to get them through this obviously squidward is is making that difficult um but then after that we uh we we just see them they're just walking now so there's no like environmental hazards necessarily but then we hear the uh the full crusty crab pizza song which is is one of the most iconic uh iconic bits where just he the the crusty crab and all that shit again it's, again that's not tom kenny singing but it is uh i, I think it is I think is that it is tom really kenny. Yeah. I th- he's, I, he's a voice wow. actor, so he's extending his range. There. I suppose. Wow. Okay. Well, then go Tom Kenny. I actually didn't know that that was him. But that's gr- that. Okay. Then that accentuates the point I was making again earlier. Like the the most iconic SpongeBob song is one that he actually is singing, uh, which is which is great. Um, and then yeah, and then they uh, yeah, and then they move on. Uh, they they're walking. Uh, he's just he, he, SpongeBob's. That that's the, like the peak. Like that is his his peak optimism. Or not physical health, at least. And then their physical health starts deteriorating over time to the point where they just collapse on the ground. And at that point, you know, Squidward is like, well, we have food right here. I'm going to eat the pizza. And so I was like, no, no, you're not going to eat it. It's for the customer. And Squidward, he's basically trying to convince SpongeBob, like, oh, come on, let's just eat it. Like, oh, you know, open it up. I think I saw something. Oh, no, I was wrong. But look, look at how good this pizza is that we have here. And the, yeah, and Spongebob's like, no, you're trying to trick me. I'm not going to eat the customer's order. The, the shot they, the like, shot that they show, though, when, like, because Kudur is, like, seductively describing the pizza to try to get Spongebob to eat it. And, like, there, there's, like, this weird shot. Like, there's this, it's their models, and it's not that different. But it's, like, it's, like, from an undershot, and it's, like, differently lit that it creates, like, this, like, like attraction effect or whatever where you're like you know it shows like the seduction of the moment or whatever and it's very it's very interesting and the the whole little bit there so they start running and chasing each other um we have kind of a visual gag with that where like they'll run off one side of the screen and then we'll see them on the other side um and then like squidward gets tired out but then spongebob you know because they're just running from one side of the screen to the other he ends up bumping back into squidward and ends up at disadvantage and squidward's basically saying, you know, I- I'm going to eat the pizza. Give me the pizza. And then Spender's like, no, look, we're saved. And he points to a big rock. <laughs> well, and then Squidward says, though, that's just a stupid boulder. And then the iconic line, it's not just a boulder. It's a rock. <laughs> and that, I mean, that line itself has been memed to hell uh, with people taking the it's a rock line and replacing it with, it's Iraq, the country, and showing a picture of the country, Iraq. You know, there's so many memes from, from that moment. Uh, and then, yeah, he gets on top of it and um, and says, the pioneers used to ride these babies for miles, and it's in great shape. And Squidward's reply to that is, like, this situation, it, it clearly would be to any outsider stupid, but Squidward's reply is maybe the least logical thing he could have said, is he says, have you ever noticed why there are no pioneers left? It's because they tried to eat coral, drive rocks, and got themselves hit by cars. But, like, a pioneer isn't, like, a race. Pioneer is, like, <laughs> yeah. it, it defines a person who, like, explores. Like, obviously, there's no pioneers left when you're in a situation where the area you're in's already been explored and... Uh, colonized so to speak yeah it's very strange um and then spongebob uh runs over squidward with the rock showing him that it indeed is can be used as a car which this for some reason spongebob has no problem driving um and then there's well, it's not a boat you see he doesn't it, need a license for rock. that is true um and then uh there's this little and he's done it a couple times in this episode whenever spongebob is doing his like pioneer bits squidward will instead of calling him spongebob call him jethro which is like i mean just sounds kind of like an old timey i guess like pioneer prospector name uh but yeah he's like hold on there jethro and then they uh and then they they make it to the uh they make it to the customer's house for the climax it's specifically a reference to um an older show that 
probably not a lot of people in this age range has seen, but the, the Beverly Hillbillies is what it's a reference mm, to. Yeah. However, uh, you know, even if you don't know that, it is still something like that. That just sounds like it makes sense. Yeah. And so we see, you know, SpongeBob, like they have this rock. They could just go home, but SpongeBob's priorities are still let's go and let's do this delivery. So he he gets to the address of the customer. They found it somehow. And finally, you know, SpongeBob, he knocks on the door with the pizza. Squidward's hanging back. He doesn't really want to do this. And so the guy opens the door and someone's like, oh, you know, congratulations, sir. You're the first owner of a Krusty Krab pizza. And the guy's like, ah, you know, I've been waiting for it. Where's my drink? You, you didn't order any drink. And then the guy just goes off. On my him. drink? You know, it really... My diet, Dr. Kelp? How am I supposed to eat this without any drink? And it just, you know, it really goes to show that kind of like customer entitlement that like, even in a situation where, like, if he had ordered a drink and SpongeBob forgot it, this is not the kind of job where, like, you'd be paid nearly enough to deal with that. But the guy's line is like, and you call yourself a delivery boy? Well, I ain't buying. Slams the door in and his face. Didn't you even once think of the customer? Oh. And it's just, like, the ultimate, like, kind of, like, being a shithead. Because, like, SpongeBob did nothing but think of the customer the entire time. And yeah. here we are. If it were up to the person that was originally there. assigned to this task, this pizza wouldn't have even gotten, wouldn't have gotten anywhere near his house. Uh, but because it was Spongebob, you know, we, so we've seen this whole episode, what Spongebob has been trying to do to get this pizza to him and for, for this reaction, it, it breaks him finally. And he, he breaks down crying in front of Squidward. And he's just like, he's completely losing it. Like this was everything to him. And now like, even though he put in all that effort, it just didn't work out. And he just, you know, re can't really handle that. And Squidward, you know, he's trying to tell him like, oh, you know, it's fine. It's, it's not that big a deal. But then Squidward really sees, you know, okay. That that was a shitty thing to do. So Squidward, he gets mad and for once in his life does his job. <laughs> um, he, he goes up to the door and he basically just slams the pizza in the guy's face and he tells Spongebob, oh, you know, you know, he, he changed his mind. He ate the whole thing in one bite. Yeah, to cheer him back up. And again, this is what I was referring to earlier with the, again, he doesn't, he, he he's a little protective of him. It's like, hey, I can, it's one of those things where it's like, hey, I can make fun of him, but you can't sort of thing. It's like, he's my, he's my little brother, you know, sort of thing. Um, so he, he gets a little bit of revenge for Spongebob, but again, he still, again, because Spongebob probably wouldn't have liked that, what he did, but he did it to kind of make himself feel better in a way, and then made Spongebob feel better on the other end of that, which is very, very, you know, actually thoughtful of him. Well, it works into the, the concept of the relationship between the two of them, and just the way that things work in the world, it, it really shows, you know, in spite of, like, you can have as much kindness and enthusiasm as is possible in the whole world, but ultimately, there's going to be times when that just doesn't get you where you need to be, and you need the assistance of, like, if you can't pull it out of yourself, then someone else, you know, has to have that, like, grit and action to ensure that things get done and problems get solved, and it really shows that in spite of the fact Squidward's attitude gets him in trouble, it's necessary for there to be people like him in the world for when situations like this happen where, you know those simple positive energetic emotions aren't enough at the end of the day and right. what ends up happening is Squidward's like oh, all right you know let's go home and so it was like oh no it's, it's time to go into work again and then he just takes them right back to work we see um the crusty crab this whole time was like three feet from where they <laughs> yeah. need to deliver the pizza <laughs> it took them like one second they, they could have just there. walked there they could they absolutely could have walked uh and it's yeah it's, and then Squidward just is like oh my god because you know i mean he he was feeling a bit better at the end there but realizing that he went all through that basically for nothing uh basically uh, uh fucks him up and you know he he has gotten no sleep in over a full day now so yeah, he, it, he would have rather gone home. Yeah, no, not uh, not great. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, that is pizza delivery, a very iconic episode. I mean, there's a couple lines that I didn't even mention that are that are just very iconic, very funny. Um, and yeah, this is uh, this one was very well written in my opinion. Yeah, there's a lot of good bits in there. It's kind of like it, it's it's a real travel journey kind of story, as much as you can make one be in you know the 11 minutes that you have to do so. Uh, so, you know, definitely one where it, it shows you a lot of character. It shows you a lot of good bits. It's just a good encapsulation of what the grander, like, early era SpongeBob is. And for, for that reason, you know, if you're only going to watch a couple, that's definitely one that is worth putting on that list. Oh, for sure. Now, from there, we do move into episode 5B here, which is called Home Sweet Pineapple. This one's written by Ennio Torreson, Eric Weiss, and Mr. Lawrence, then storyboarded by Ennio Torreson and Eric Weiss. Same kind of thing we've seen here. You know, some of the writers are the storyboarders in that 
just kind of makes sense with the way things are going to flow. Uh, we open up in this with a, we, we see these little creatures and they are the nematodes. We'll, we'll find that out pretty shortly. Uh, they just kind of say all the actions they're doing, you know, walking, walking, walking hungry, 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 thirsty, thirsty. <laughs> and we see like they, they are just ravenous. Like there's a man driving a car and they just eat his entire car. And he, he just keeps going forward in spite of that. And it's just like, dang, nematodes. Yeah, nematodes. And then, yeah. And then uh, after they eat the car, they go, mm, thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. And one thing I really like about their little, like, dynamic, too, is they all, like, say it with different inflections. They're not just all going, like, thirsty, thirsty. Like, the, like someone will go, like, mm, thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. Like, they'll say it, like, all differently and stuff, which is, which is I don't know, it's a little it's, it's funny. They're, they're all their own individual little beings in the, the mass that is thirsty. Yeah. Um, and then they, uh, so because they're thirsty, they see a pineapple, and uh, of course they go up to it and pull out straws and begin to uh, to suck the pineapple. And yeah, so they're they're drinking SpongeBob's house, and we see here like the the house is shrinking as well as the furnishings, which kind of implies like I, I guess those are part of the pineapple itself. Yeah. And SpongeBob's first reaction, he's sleeping. He wakes up. He sees. He's like, Gary, we're finally huge. Hooray, Gary, we're finally huge. And it's yeah, it's really funny because everything like you, you see like the first things to shrink are like the chest or like 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 a, like a chest that he has or like like the just individual items shrink before the actual house does that much, uh, which is which is really weird. <laughs> And we see, so Spongebob, he's basically, he's not sure what to do. He doesn't know what's happening. So he calls Squidward. He's like, I'll, I'll call Squidward. He'll know what to do. And Squidward's response is, uh, is it time already for you to ruin my day? And Spongebob, he's trying to explain the situation. But like, you know, his phone is also shrinking and then shrinks out of existence. And then like he screams and Squidward hears it from his house. And he's like, well, I guess that's my answer. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's just panicking around. And then we see Patrick. Also is woken up by Spongebob's panic and says, is it time to already ruin Squid's day? <laughs> Spongebob, don't start without me. And then he, like, he falls into his rock and then comes back out wearing, like, a suit. <laughs> Which is weird. Um, it's something he had ready for the occasion. But then, yeah, uh, by the, before Patrick gets there, we see that uh, Spongebob's entire house uh, disappears. And it's just him and Gary sitting on the spot where his, uh, well, him and Gary and a pebble sitting on the spot where his house used to be. And um, this is something that, like, we kind of saw it last episode, but this is, like, one of the first times that we see Spongebob go through, like, something big happening to him. Usually he's, like, doing something and maybe little things will go wrong during it, like Squidward not liking him or, like, him and Patrick getting into a fight or something like that. But this is, like, the first time we see him actually have to, like, deal with, like, a big thing happening to him. And, and we see here, you know, like, his house is gone. Um, in this world, there is no such thing as homeowner's insurance. So that's, you know, he can't just like get it rebuilt easily. And he's kind of like, he's explaining to Patrick and Squidward, it's like, my my house is gone, guys. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then a couple like minutes later, Patrick's like, hey, SpongeBob, your house is gone. <laughs> oh, gosh. And then, um, yeah. And then once uh, once he says that, Squidward's like, oh, okay, well, SpongeBob, nice, nice knowing you. And then he goes back into his house and he's like, oh, it's, it's, or, it's, it's so sad. He goes, boo hoo. Boo hoo. And then we hear like confetti and like like happy music starting to play. He's like he starts dancing, going boo hoo, boo hoo. And uh, and then Patrick says, "Squid's taking it real hard." And, and so SpongeBob's solution at that point is, you know, well, I, I guess I'm gonna have to move back in with my parents. And we see a picture of his parents smiling. And Patrick's like, "No, we can rebuild it. I built my own house, and look at how good it is. Even though it's it's just a large rock." Uh, yeah. So I'm presuming he put it there, but that's that's about the extent of the the building process. Uh, but what I think is funny about this whole bit is we we cut back to the picture of his parents and they're frowning now <laughs> because they they don't get SpongeBob back, showing that like oh you know his parents you know they have a really good relationship with him. Yeah. And so we we get this whole construction montage. It starts with Patrick, so he's trying to put put a nail into a board, and instead he's just hitting his hand, and then he tries again and he hits his hand again. And he just he keeps doing that. He keeps doing it and yelling. Um, and then, yeah, then Spongebob, like, dumps two kinds of paint on his front and back and just, like, flops across a fence to paint it. Uh, and we see a couple other ri ridiculous things, too. Like, Spongebob, he, he's using a wrench and it, like, changes <laughs> gravity so Patrick's just falling into the atmosphere. It's like instead of the wrench moving just the bolt, the, the world is moving around the bolt to screw it in. 
Um, yeah, and then there's another one where, like, SpongeBob is, like, hammering boards floating in the air, but because he's floating in the air, they're unstable and fall, and so they keep falling on Patrick, but he keeps, like, moving into them to get out of the way of the next one, but doesn't realize that, like, he's moving in the same direction. It's a, it's a fun little montage. It's a lot of, you know, visual humor in this one. A yes. lot of, a lot of things that are better when seen, but we do see, you know, it cuts to, like, okay, you know, they're done, here's the pineapple, and Patrick's like, I wish I lived there, but then we see it's only about, like, two feet like big and Spender tries to go in and then he's like oh really would you really want to live here no <laughs> so, i wish i lived there really no, no. <laughs> Um, but then, yeah, at this point, uh, SpongeBob again uh, says, "Like, oh, well, it looks like it's time to go move back in with mom and pop." And Patrick, again, not wanting this, is like, "Hey, why don't you and Gary come live with me?" And uh, which he's like, "Okay, yeah, I guess we'll do that." And then they they show them like going to bed, and the way they go to bed is there's a flat surface, and then SpongeBob and Patrick are on opposite sides of the rock, using it as a blanket, <laughs> which is. And- very weird. And then we see, like, you know, they're trying to sleep, but then Patrick... So there's a, there's a lot of different things there that are just making it not work. Like, he's he's snoring really loud, so uh, he, he's basically screaming in his sleep almost. <gasps> and SpongeBob, he's trying to deal with that, but then, like, he, you know, just plugs Patrick's mouth, um, and they're fighting over the rock because it's cold out. And then uh, we see Patrick here starts to have night terrors and he believes that spongebob is uh spiders and he just starts beating them with his rock over and over again yeah it's it's very he's going spiders and beating him with the whole rock uh but something about this whole moment is and there's been a, a few instances of this throughout the, the these first few episodes where they they haven't committed to how patrick lives in his rock yet like, in the first episode, it's very much implied that there's just a hole under the ground. And that is mostly implied, and that is how we will see later it actually works. Like, there's a hole under the rock that he lives in. But, like, there's the one episode where, like, he lifts up the the um, the um Naughty Nautical Neighbors episode where he lifts up the rock. And, like, there, you can see furniture and stuff in there, and he sits down on a couch. But then he smashes it shut, and it, like, accordions him. So he, like, he, like that's what fucks him up. And then, like, in this one, it's implied that there is nothing under the rock. He's just laying, like, he just, they just use it as, he just uses it as, like, a blanket. Which is, again, another departure from how they do it. So I think they're, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't think they necessarily, I think they were like we're always going to commit to that being what it is but it's just a fun little like i guess visual thing that they're doing yeah every time we see patrick's house um it wasn't like this in naughty nautical neighbors but it is like this in a lot of future episodes where the majority of things in his house are just built out of sand so like whatever he needs that day he just makes it out of sand uh and just like digs whatever area he needs so it's kind of like a um whatever they need it to be it's pretty malleable because it's just sand in a lot of situations. But here, yeah, it's it's the rock itself seems to be the only thing providing him any support there. And that's it's a little more true to life. It's probably because, um, you know, again, when the when the show started, Steven Hillenberg, he originally wanted to like kind of teach a little bit about marine biology. Like it was supposed to be like an educational tool before he tweaked it to be kind of just, you know, a kid's cartoon. Mm-hmm. And so this idea, well, you know, starfish do that. They just they'll cling to a rock and they'll just like sit there. And that's the equivalent of like their home. Well, yeah, that's um, and that's the first time we see Patrick in the show is is uh, when he, or not the first time, but the first time we see him in his home is when he's he's just laying on top of the rock, like seemingly sunbathing. But I mean, that's that's what starfish do. Yeah, and so that's again probably a part of that, like a holdover from the marine biology studies he'd done. But so from there, you know, SpongeBob, he basically just tries, okay, I'll I'll just sleep outside. But then Patrick in his night terrors follows him and continues to just beat him with the rock. He's yelling spiders. So eventually he is yelling spiders the whole time. So he he goes into Squidward's house and Squidward is asleep at this point. He's just like, Squidward, Squidward, can we live with you for a month or two? So he's like, "Mm, no, whatever. Like he's, you know, he's not really awake for this. And then he's like, Hey, Squidward, uh, could I also have a glass of water? Yeah, I, I, you know, I really like sleepovers. And Squidward, he's just accepting all of this. And we see here, um, we saw on Plankton, Squidward wore nothing to bed. Here they gave him a nightcap and a gown because I guess the network was like, yeah, he, he probably shouldn't sleep naked. Yeah. Um, and that does become his consistent um, sleeping outfit. But yeah, it's very, it's very funny. SpongeBob is being like, like very unreasonably demanding of the person that he just entered his room and asked to sleep in his bed. He like he, like we see like when he even goes up to get the glass of water, SpongeBob moves the pillow more, so it's more on his side and stuff. It's just, it's very very weird for him. And then like you know it's like good night, Squidward, and he's like yeah good night, SpongeBob. And then he realizes okay 
you're getting out of my house now. Yeah, his, like, he, he his eyelids like up. crash open. Yeah, his eyelids like crash open. Of uh, this is like neat zoom in thing, and yeah, that's he he kicks him out, and it's funny too. He doesn't even actually yell. He just his eyelids crash open, and then we see him just calmly walk Gary and SpongeBob out the front door, and just be like, "Good night, SpongeBob." <laughs> So cool. And so then, you know, we, we cut to the next morning, you know, we got there somehow and Squidward's like, today's the day, the day SpongeBob moves back in with his parents. And we, we see a little, another visual gag here where Squidward, like he goes in his bathroom, he showers, he puts on clothes and we see like, it's a visual of like, him, you know, changing. So like he's throwing out like clothes, uh, throwing them away. We see he has underwear, but he never wears yeah. anything on his bottom half. So that's. Well, that's why he that's was throwing. That's there. why he was throwing it out of the room is because he doesn't need that. He's not wearing it. I know. I, I guess he doesn't need that. And so, you know, he, he's outside. Patrick's outside. SpongeBob's parents are there with a car. He's about to get in. And then he, he has the pebble from the start of the episode and he plants it down where his house was. And he's like, well, I guess this is goodbye. Goodbye to my friends in my town. And then he, he starts to kind of, you know, cry. But then we see when he cries, it, it hits the little what he called a pebble was actually a seed from the pineapple. And from that, it, it's nutrients. So it allows the pineapple to start growing again and so spongebob is trying to go off and then patrick he grabs the back of the car and just starts like bringing it up while he's crying yeah patrick's just, just having a whole it. patrick's just having a whole meltdown here so he he starts uh he starts crying grabs the like just flips the whole car up almost um and then yeah while this is happening squidward is is dancing on the spot where spongebob's house used to be just doing spongebob is leaving he's leaving doing like an interpretive dance um, and this is interspliced with scenes of seeing the seed kind of like glowing and vibrating really fast. Um, and then, yeah, eventually it, it grows up. There's a little like stalk that comes out, not even from the area where he planted it, but it comes out like, you know, it comes out above, above the ground. And we just see the fully formed pineapple with a door, uh, windows, a ch like his chimney thing. And it plops down right on top of Squidward. And so SpongeBob, he goes in, his parents go in, Patrick goes in, and we see all the furnishings are there. So the, the implication yeah. is that like SpongeBob didn't buy any of those furnishings or do anything for that. Like his house just it just grew like it's, that. It just be like he just that. Just found it and it just had all of those exact things. Because everything's exactly the same. The wallpaper, the things hung on the walls, the chairs. And so we also see like when they're all running in Squidward, he's like buried under the sand. Like the sand kind of works as like a flooring, even though the outside's already sand, it's just part of it. And SpongeBob's like, Squidward, I won't have to move after all. I'm going to live here forever. Forever? Oh. <laughs> and then that's, that's how that one ends. Yeah, it's... And it's one of those things, too, where, like, you know, we, we've mentioned it before a couple times. The first season is very good about this, where it's funny when Squidward gets hurt because he deserves what happens to him. Like, he's there. SpongeBob is having a very hard time yeah. this entire episode. Patrick's having a hard time, and Squidward just doesn't care. He's just thinking about himself and what it means for him. So he's just happy, like, oh, you know, SpongeBob will be gone. And it's, you know, it's implied, too, that his parents live kind of a ways. Like, he probably wouldn't, because he says goodbye Bikini Bottom when he gets in the car, so he probably wouldn't even be working at the Krusty Krab anymore. So Squidward would just be, like, completely out of spongebob's life they just wouldn't have anything to do with each other and he's just over here gloating about that fact while spongebob is just falling apart and so that's why you know when he gets hurt again it's kind of that system of karma it's like well you know you acted bad you wished ill will and so something bad happened to you exactly and yeah this one uh, i mean i i would love to have a, a seed that could just grow me a house but you know unfortunately uh fortunately it doesn't work that way but uh yeah it's it's very interesting, yeah, because that the implication is he just like came across it one day. There was just a, pi a fully furnished pineapple sitting there that nobody was living in that he just, I don't know, bought maybe from somebody. But yeah, it's it's a it's a, a it's an infinite house. The implications of how the housing market work in Bikini Bottom are a little all over the place. Like with SpongeBob, we can assume he either grew it or found it. With Patrick, obviously, it's just a rock, and then. Uh, Squidward's house is an Easter Island head, and I believe it's called Moai statues if you want to be more technical about it, but I don't think it ever gets referred like that in the show. Um, but the whole thing is like, okay, like a pineapple that just grows, a rock, you just find that. And the Easter Island head, it's implied like, you know, it's sunk down from the surface. Um, and then the, the idea where Squidward got his furniture, a lot of what we see is things he made, like portraits and art. So that's stuff where it's like, obviously, he put that there, but I guess it's implied with him too. The base furnishings were there whenever he found it. And it, it just kind of seems like, well, stuff just is where it is here. And then people just move in, which 
again, is a little bit more true to how, you know, life underwater and nature would work. Like, you know, a, a crab is just going to find something to hide under. A, a starfish is just going to cling to something. A sponge is just, you know, they don't really have the same kind of autonomy as the yeah. rest of them, but they normally just grow somewhere, usually by coral. And, you know, it's just kind of a part of that here where it's like, well, they just live where they found places to live. Again, it's it's one of those things where it, it there's a little bit of like connecting it back to like how real world marine biology works, but it's mostly just uh, you know cartoon kid show logic and, and stuff like that. So there's a little bit of both that they're kind of grabbing from, but yeah, the the implication is is there either way. Yeah, and even so, it, it's one of those things where the show is not about real estate. You know, it, it's not going to <laughs> go into that kind SpongeBob of deep lore. SpongeBob minutes. House Flipper. That's going to be one of the, the spinoffs we get coming in these next couple of years. God. Yeah, we got a, there's, there's a lot of different SpongeBob media these days. We got the, you know, Patrick Star show. We got Camp SpongeBob, which is just, you know, SpongeBob babies, uh, which could be a whole talking point of its own. Steven Hillenberg said, yeah, no, I really don't want them to do that. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's passed away now. And as soon as he passed away, they kind of decided to do that, which is, you know, hmm, think and face on that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, staying on topic of the episode itself, of the contents of it. Uh, you know, a lot of this really is visual. Um, a lot of both of these episodes are. Pizza Delivery does have a lot of, like, quips. You know, it's one of those things where we talked about the different styles of the different, you know, writing teams so far. Uh, it's one of those things where Home Sweet Pineapple's best moments are things you see and not necessarily jokes you hear. Uh, it's got a lot of energy to it in that way. And so, again, you know, if you're already, you know, stopping on your way, as we said earlier, watch, you know, Pizza Delivery. You know, its B side is also something worth worth watching. You know, we haven't really had any bad episode of the show yet. That's how a lot of episodes are. We we talked about this when we were looking through the episode lists that are coming up. There's there's a lot of there's always a good episode in them, like one that you remember, a very memorable one. And then when you think about the other one, you know what it is. Like we all we know what all the episodes are if we hear the title or even read a small synopsis. And you think, oh, that's also a solid episode. So that's how a lot of these next ones will be. There'll be one maybe more iconic episode that is beloved and has a lot of quotable lines. And there'll be another one that's, you know, good and, you know, is a solid watch. And it's one of those things, you know, to kind of wrap up the episode summary here, kind of wrap up the episode is, you know, we say, and, you know, if you look at it, people will say, you know, SpongeBob is not like the kind of show that's trying to give you a moral. It's a show that's just trying to give you a, you know, fun, good time, something to laugh at. But ultimately, again, we see these different works in the way that just the world of SpongeBob works. Where it's like doing good leads to good, doing bad leads to bad. And it also makes very sure, you know, like in pizza delivery, okay, you know, being assertive is not the same as being bad or being negative. Sometimes that's something you need to be. And so there's just all these little things. Like it is never preaching to you, but subtly, I do believe that there was at least some amount of intent there to impart you know, these are the ways that life should be lived and these are the ways that should be rewarded. Oh, absolutely. And I think, honestly, that's the best way of doing, especially kids' storytelling, is not beating them over the face with a with a moral or a lot or a like philosophy or something like that, but subtly hinting at ways that you maybe should be or should think about things and 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 all that stuff. I think that's the best way to do kids' media, you know, because the show is, again, very often praised for it not like having a super big moral philosophy but i think it does it's just it does it very well that you don't notice it under all the good jokes and the just good kids cartoons especially in some of the other episodes we've seen so far too like the sandy centric ones like tea at the tree dome actively tells you like you should just tell me when you have needs and like you know um when they're on the beach and you know he sings his whole song sandy's like your song was true if you want to be my friend just be yourself and it's like well you know those are clearly trying to be morals but the things we remember about those episodes is not like the moral we're told it's the actions we were seeing and their consequences exactly but you know the morals are still there and maybe that'll seep into a, a child's brain and they, that'll make him a better person and that's you know i would say everyone that's watched spongebob is a good person i could say that for a for a fact it's a lot to say i don't know about that one <laughs> it's not true in any way yeah, i don't i don't know about that that <laughs> I want to rethink that philosophy a little bit. <laughs> if you watch SpongeBob, you have a chance to be a good person. And that's where I'll leave that one. <laughs> I, I, I guess that one is true. Um, with that, you know, those were kind of my closing thoughts. Did you have anything else you wanted to add about 
this episode or anything with this show so far i i think we are good um and on that uh everybody thank you for listening to episode five of spongebob Lomatic. um remember uh follow us on the podcasting site that you were using if you wish to to watch more episodes of these also be sure uh, if you want to contact us uh, you can leave a comment on our youtube channel which is just spongebob Lomatic cast or you can follow us on twitter at sb Lomatic cast um, we tweet out uh, whenever a new episode goes live, so you could follow there to get updates on that. Otherwise, if you want to tweet us a question or just any sort of comment, that is the place to do so. And next week, we will be going over episode six. That's going to be Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, and the B-side to that one will be Pickles. So if either of those sounds interesting or is something you remember, do be sure to continue to watch and wait eagerly for that. Um, you know, if you have any thoughts about this episode, anything you want to talk about for the next one, do go ahead. Just let us know. Contact us at any of those places, and we will see you then. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs>